Welcome back to Think Tank. I'm Steve Adubato. We continue the conversation on breaking the cycle, youth and teen bullying and abuse. Um, we're joined by our good friend, Joe Clementi, who is the co-founder of the Tyler Clementi Foundation. Good to see you, Joe. Good to see you, Steve. Last time we saw each other was at the Rustberry Awards for Making a Difference. That's right. Powerful conversation we had with you, and we wanted to have you back here. Tyler um, was 18 years of age, a student at Rutgers. He was. 2010. Talk to us. People hear it, but they don't understand it or know it. Well, Tyler uh, was a gay young man who had just come out a couple of days before he left for college at Rutgers University. And during that time, at the first couple of weeks at Rutgers, he was webcammed uh, by a student at the dorm in an embarrassing situation with uh, another man. And uh, a couple of days after that, uh, we had uh, found out he had died by suicide. Naturally, after that, there was an investigation, and there was a trial, and there was a whole series of things that, that happened that were very difficult on the family and on everybody. And for some reason, Tyler's story seemed to make the media uh, more than the other three people that died similarly due to bullying mm -hmm. that month in that year. Joe, social media is a part of this. Technology is a part of it. Teen bullying and abuse. But what's the biggest lesson that not only that you have and your family have taken, but that you want to share with our audience about breaking the cycle, given what happened to Tyler and to so many others? In order to break the cycle, people have to pledge that they won't engage in bullying, and they have to recognize bullying. Sometimes we do things and we don't recognize what it is, and other people don't call us on it. So don't be afraid to call somebody on it. Okay, so this thing, by the way, we're talking to Joe Clementi, the co-founder of the Tyler Clementi Foundation. The upstander pledge is what and why does it matter? Well, we developed that early on at the foundation in order to get people to make a commitment to not bully, and if they see bullying, to recognize it and to either take an, uh, take an action to either uh, intervene or to tell somebody else about it, because these were the weaknesses we saw with Tyler and what his experience and what happened to him at the university. Many people knew he was being webcammed in advance, but nobody did anything. Back up. Many people, students, possibly others, we don't know, knew that this was happening. He was being webcammed. His privacy was being violated. He was being humiliated, abused, bullied, and nothing? Nothing. This came out in the trial. And we learned that the soccer team knew about it, people off campus knew about it. Naturally, some of the people, not all, but some of the people in the dorm who were, uh, who were uh, uh, close to the uh, perpetrator uh, were uh, aware of it. And nobody took an action to actually stop it. No upstanders. Right. Nobody stood up. Right. So we tell our kids to stand up for themselves if they are bullied, harassed. It's not enough, is it? Well, some kids can do that, but some can't. But it's, okay, but it's not enough for us to tell our teenage boys, stand up for yourself. It is stand up for others. That's right, because others, not everybody can stand up for themselves. Sometimes it takes other people to help. That's why the pledge is so important. That's why, that's why, that's why our work at the foundation. We have now a million upstander movement, which by the 10th anniversary of Tyler's death, we're looking to generate 1 million takers of the upstander pledge, and we're at 140,000 right now. Wow, wow. How much progress are we making in terms of breaking this cycle, Joe? You know, we're making progress, and it's a, a kind of a difficult thing to measure, but I think that, that the younger folks are more advanced than some of the older folks. Are schools getting better at this? Yeah, I think they are. They, I they really, are? I think they are. By what, being more aggressive, more assertive? I don't want to assume. I, I think that the, uh, that the kids themselves, I see changes in the way they interact with each other. And I'm not around a lot of children all the time. I don't have young children anymore. Yeah. But, but, you know, the, our, this, this new 
uh, generation that's out there. They seem to be a little kinder to each other. They seem to recognize that people can have differences and that it's okay. Yeah, but Joe Clemente, here's the other part of this. That may be true for younger people, but is it fair to say that in the current national environment we are in, the political environment, the kind of discourse and the divisiveness that is going on, that potentially that the LGBTQ community, particularly for teens, that they are more of a target, or am I making too much of that? I see the discourse that you're talking about, and that's never a good idea to have discourse. And I think that what people have to act as adults, and certainly it's not a, it's, it makes it a kind of a worse situation for, for teens, but I think the teens know. I think yeah. they know themselves and can handle themselves. I think it's the adults, really, that have the problem. What do you mean? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Particularly with LGBTQ youth, we have the problem? I think the adults need more training than the kids. I think the kids are getting the training that they need to a great extent. I think they could always use more, and we always have to work at it. Right. But I think, I think the adults in the workplace and, and things like that, I think that's, that's where some Real quick, man, I'll Joe. Oh, sorry, Steve Adubato, Joe Clemente. This is Think Tank. Um, you're also watching us on the air, but also the podcast as well. Here's my question, advice for parents right now. They want to protect their children, but they also want to make sure that their children are supportive of other children, you say? Go to our website. Look at the tools that it's are on our website. It's up there right now. Put it up, team. Go ahead. Look at the tools that are on our website and use the tools. If you have any questions, call us. Jane is very approachable. Jane's involved with the foundation on a daily basis. And, Tell everyone and who we'll, Jane is. We'll help you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell Jane. Tell, tell Jane, uh, talk to Jane, she's very approachable, and she'll help you any way that, uh, that she possibly can. We can come to your school, your workplace, she does that herself, mm. my son James does some of that, and we have other folks that get involved with that as well. Before I let you go, Joe, I just want to say this. Mm. We've known each other for a while, we've had a few conversations. I don't think anyone watching right now, can, unless they've experienced it personally, can understand or even, even try to understand what you and your family have gone through. The fact that you and your family are doing this work, you didn't have to. You're helping a lot of other people. I just want to say thanks. Well, you're welcome. We couldn't have it any other way. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Steve Adubato. This has been Think Tank. Um, thank you for watching us. We just want you to think about things that matter. We'll see you next time. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been provided by Holy Name Medical Center, New Jersey Sharing Network, the New Jersey Education Association, the Russell Berry Foundation, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, NJM Insurance Group and by Georgian Court University. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.